Here is the most popular question of all time. What should my sample size be? How many sample size? How many samples do I need? How many runs should I make? How can I be confident in my results so that the p-value is less than 0 0.05? Well, here's a good news for you. Here's one way to address that question, um, whether it be from quality or QA and so forth, as a development scientist when you do not have all the answers. Let's just say that the answer depends on certain assumptions and there have been a lot of equations or rules of thumbs to develop a single answer and even in the past I've created spreadsheets um, to answer this question which turned out to be useless so here it is what do we need to know to answer the sample size question n here's one tail sample size equation these factors are what goes into that equation so what do you need first you need to know the delta, the practical or physical difference in the mean response you wish to detect, meaning what, when should I care uh, about the critical attribute or quality attribute, the difference that you'll be seeing, the delta basically of the y. Okay? You need to know that, define that first. And then, then you need to know the population standard deviation, which is unknown because you have not run enough sample um, studies already in the sampling. So that's an assumption. How about the Z alpha and Z beta? These are the alpha risks and the beta risk. Basically what the patient is willing to take and the risk that the company is willing to take. These are usually 0.05 and 0.1 is the industry standard, but that's not the concern. It's the cost of managing the factor. It could actually be less or more depending on how much risk the patient or the company is willing to take. So in general, the smaller the D, the larger the N becomes because it's in the bottom. The larger the um, standard deviation, the larger the sample size becomes, of course, it's in the top. And the process out of control, if, remember, we talked about how we should have test the stability before we run any design of experiments of the process, the larger the process out of control, the larger the sample size because we'll have more noise. Um, the closer to optimum, the larger the sample size n. The lower the risk, the larger the n, because these tables go up. So there you have it. If someone asks the same question, sample size, you tell them that you need to know the answers to these to answer their question of sample size. Best answer for me would be the sample size depends on the answer of the scientist who knows the implication of what that process parameter will do or attribute will do in the end. So because this is very important, the delta, you need to define that before you run your experiments.